Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Conqueror's Blade. So today I kind of wanted to overgo um, a little bit of a conversation about territory wars, the open world and kind of how a lot of it works because it's something that I've really been digging down into a lot more in this test, particularly as our house has sort of been developing and I think it's something that isn't really explained much or, or at all in any of the tutorials and I mean I've played in almost every beta phase for quite a while now and taken me to this one to really get a hang of it so there must be a lot of people out there who have really no clue about it and i think it's such a major part of the game already and is only going to increase as sort of house wars territory wars become a, a larger part of the game so hopefully i can sort of clarify a little bit at least in the very basic sense kind of what it's all about rather rashly i haven't scripted this video at all so let's hope i can convey this in a vaguely uh, sensible manner so let's head over to the map well actually no let's first head over to the house so this is currently house evo obviously just a uh, house related built around the channel and it's kind of works a bit like a clan so people join houses and it's, and it's like joining a clan or a guild or that sort of thing you know we all work together we can all message each other we can see if there's any house ter or territory wars going on either attacking or defending um who we're fighting against etc i can see the members we can talk to each other i can put notices out and so that's kind of a house and that's the basis of what the territory wars are all about it's going to be houses fighting um against each other to try and secure land now houses can work together in alliances it's a little bit buggy at the moment or a little bit smaller at the moment because of the way that it's kind of working in this closed beta phase but in effect houses could join together in an alliance so multiple houses can work together to hold down a, perhaps a larger piece of territory like chaos has done over here in some of the some of the area so if we now go to the map and then hopefully what i'm talking about should come a little bit clearer so we can see all these so this is orgolia this is the capital of ostaria um, there are currently four regions in the game whose names i can't all remember there's ostaria there's moyang there's lu lu yang and uh, another one in effect there are four regions and you can see them sort of vaguely down here they're split sort of somewhere down these ranges here so you've got myang and then the other one down here i think this is luyang down here and then ostaria the region i'm in is somewhere bordering up and around here but um so you, so once you're in a region you're basically locked into that region i think that's the first thing it's important to understand so if you are planning on joining a specific house a specific house is more than likely going to be tied to a specific region so you're going to be wanting to join a house in your region. There's no point joining a house um, that's located in Moyang if your main character is over here in Ostaria because well, you can't help in any of the territory wars. So then beyond that, when houses go to the war, they're trying to take hold of things like these, these settlements. And as you can see, each settlement has got an owner. If you scroll down, oh, I can't actually point because it's on the screen. Uh, hold on, green screen, I can't, I can't point. But you can see it says house at Red Wing, Oh, well, well, it's a, a large Russian clan. And these guys have owned quite a bit of territory. You can see it all down here. And they're part of the Alliance Wings of Chaos. So if you think, I think over here, we also start to see, uh, yeah, a different house. That's House Chaos, but they're both in the same alliance as Red Wing. So these two separate houses owning separate pieces of territory, but both in an alliance working together. So because of that, they're actually managing to hold down a pretty large area. They're open, open, holding down all of Upper Ostar, all up here, and all these territories, all theirs, along as all down here and a few little bits dotted in between as well, some of the more major cities. And so by holding that territory, they then get a few benefits, or, or many benefits. One, there's obviously the prestige of just owning territory, and they actually get to own these cities. They then get much better access and free access to all of the resource collection points. Now, without going into detail onto that as a sort of separate topic, there are other videos on that. You know, resource collection points are where you are going to get crafting materials, things that are going to be used to create equipment, create unit equipment, so it allows you to build new units, craft new hero equipment. It's all going to be uh, pretty critical stuff because now a lot of that equipment is no longer available to buy by NBC, so it's going to be a pretty player-driven economy. So these resources are only going to become uh, increasingly valuable. And as you see, a uh, collection is prohibited. So as a, as a player who's not part of that house, I'm not allowed to collect from any of these uh, resource piles. Some, um, they, they can also let me collect from them and then tax me. So they can uh, basically get a tax income from allowing players to use these resource piles. 
that's another way for the clan to generate an income. That's kind of the really the major benefits of holding these territories in the territory war, or fiefs as they're kind of known. Um, yeah, and that kind of sums up pretty much how it works. As a smaller house like ours, um, as House Evo, it's been really tough to get on the map because you're often fighting up against the bigger clans. Um, I don't know if we can see some there's a small small house there. I think they perhaps just own that one territory. Yeah, so there's some small little clans down here. Nordic Gaming own a couple of things down here. Um, these guys here. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that. Own Bergdorf down here, so they own one territory, just uh, quite nice and close to Orgolia as well, which is kind of handy for them. So it is possible to smaller houses to get on the map, but you're obviously competing against these much larger uh, alliances. So how do the actual wars occur? So as a house owner, I'm owner of a house, I have the ability to declare war on various territory around the map. So for example, say if we wanted to take on this small house down here, I can click on the map, uh, we can see a settlement overview, war info, etc. And I have an option to declare war, and then I get to pick a time. Now, all these are, are, are predefined slots. So you can't just pick any time. It's all happening effectively in the evening of European time, kind of when the time zone is set. I think that's the idea, is to give everyone a good chance of defending their territory. And then the opportunity I could pick tomorrow between 7 and half past eight and that'll give me a one and a half hour window in which i can assault the town and once i captured i've got to hold it for that hour and a half and after that then it's mine and it's safe until someone else decides to clear war with it or i can do it in three days or in five days and for me to do that it costs my house 400 prestige which i don't actually currently have so i can't can't declare war but you get the idea how that works and that window how that window is opening up um, I would then, you know, once that war time ticks around, we would gather together as a clan, march towards Bergdorf and assault it. And you would get basically like a sort of field battle. I think the battles uh, vary, the maps vary depending on the settlement. Some of the bigger towns, I think, may have walls. There are actually some castles and stuff which haven't yet been unlocked. These are still AI owned. Uh, but these might then be sort of more like siege battles. So the battle map is going to depend on kind of the settlement you're assaulting. So yeah, hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how uh, territory wars kind of work in this game. Um, yeah, it's been quite a bit of a learning curve for me just trying to get my head around it all. Then obviously as you're heading down here, you can't pass into the bottom territories because this is in the territory of uh, Luyang, I think it was. So I can't take houses down here because I'm not in this region, even though there's not a clearly defined boundary. That's something else you'll kind of run into. And of course, if you didn't know already, when you're inside this little dot of blue line, you're in safe territory. This is this is the friendly zone, the AI zone, with Orgolu in the middle. So anyway, hopefully you found that overview sort of vaguely interesting or vaguely useful. I don't know how many of you kind of know how territory wars work, but in effect, I think this is going to be playing a pretty major part in the future of the game because this is kind of the really the competitive element. And this is where the resources that everyone's going to need for crafting um, are going to come from so owning these resource points i think is going to be increasingly valuable as we go forwards so anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have let me know what you think in the comments down below subscribe to the channel for lots more conqueror's blade content um and yeah thanks for watching and i shall see you all on the next video